Excel has over 400 built-in functions, and among the most powerful of them is the if function. It acts almost as a threshold function in the sense that it opens the door to a new and more expansive use of Excel. It's almost programming-like in nature. In a nutshell, it gives us the ability to come up with different answers depending upon conditions. In this worksheet, we're trying to calculate a shipping cost. If you look in cell C4, you'll see there's a description indicating that there's no shipping charge for orders over $1,500. All the other orders have a shipping cost that's 2% of the total. As we're looking at the data in column F, and also in column H, where there's a formula that's going to be adding on that shipping cost, we need to calculate a shipping cost here, but it's not always going to be the same. In some cases, it'll be zero. In other cases, it's going to be 2% of the cost. Now, the if function, although long, as we are about to see it on the screen here, the answer is going to fit into column G just fine. But I do want to make the column wider and zoom in so we can see this more clearly on the screen. So using the zoom button here, we'll zoom a little bit larger and also make column G wider. The if function essentially asks us to set up a logical test. If, left parenthesis, the if function contains three arguments or parameters. The first one is a logical test. Often you want to compare two different cells. At other times, compare a cell with a value. That's what we're about to do here. Sometimes you're comparing a cell with a formula or a formula with text. Quite a few options here. If we want to compare cell F7, we can click it or type it, to see if it's greater than 1,500. Based on what we're seeing up in the description above, what happens if it's exactly 1,500? Well, based on what we're seeing here, it says if it's over 1,500. If it means also to include 1,500, then we want our descriptor to be greater than followed by equal to. And so we read this as if F7 is greater than or equal to. Again, you have to be sensitive about this issue here and there regarding should that be there, should that not be there. In other circumstances here, you could imagine using the less than arrow, sometimes the equal by itself, and occasionally, but not too often, if you're checking to see if two entries are not equal to one another, you'll use the less than and the greater than arrow together. That means not equal to. But in this case, again, we want to say, greater than or equal to, use the two symbols in this order. Now, below this, you see logical test, but as we put in the comma here, we finished the logical test, and now the focus shifts to the value if true. This can be a formula, it can be a cell reference, it can be a pure value, it can be a text entry. So when this is true, we simply want to have a shipping cost of zero, comma, when it's not true, in other words, when this amount here is less than 1,500, we want this to be 2% of the total cost. And one way to type this, certainly not the only way, is 2% times that cost. Now, a concern that might not be so obvious here is the idea that 2% of that cost could involve portions of pennies. We don't want any straggling half cents out there. So you might need to use a function called round. We don't always use the round function along with the if function, but in this case, it makes sense. The round function allows you to take a calculation like the one we're seeing here, and by putting a comma here, then indicate the number of decimal places that you want to round the calculation to. And in this example here, we want the calculation to be to the nearest penny. That would be two decimal places. And we need a right parenthesis for the round portion of this, and then a final parenthesis for the if portion. And when I press enter, we're likely to see 2% of that $1,449. And that's what we see. And it's always best to test out these formulas in just a few cells at first, make sure they're working. Let's drag this down a little bit so we encounter a value that's over 1,500. Sure enough, what happens, we're seeing 
a zero. Now that's not really a zero, but that's the equivalent of a zero. If we change the format of this, depending on what the kind of format we use, we will see zero there. But that certainly makes the case that there's no shipping charge. And after checking out a few of these, if this looks just right, fine, we'll double click the lower right hand corner and copy this formula all the way to the bottom. Ultimately, we don't need to have this column as wide as it is. We'll simply double click here to take it back to its former location. So we've seen the if function gives us quick capability here to provide alternate answers based on conditions in the worksheet.